Alrighty, we are here to talk about the Commandos, the Orc Infiltrator mobs of Kill Team 24 with the re-release of Kill Team Edition 3, Kill Team 24, it's hard to know. We're here to look at the new and improved Commandos. The Commandos have been one of the most popular teams since their inception for Kill Team 21 in the box against the newly defined Death Core of Krieg. And with the changeover to the new edition, the team has seen a bunch of new changes, along with the base game of Kill Team seeing a lot of changes. So we're here to see what's changed and kind of go over the new and improved commandos. The orcs retain many things that they w kept in Kill Team 21 with Throat Slitter is the ability to charge from concealed, letting them break a lot of deadlocks that a lot of teams don't have to deal with, and being able to stay perfectly concealed after making their charges. That means that engaging in the midboard with commandos tends to be a losing affair a lot of the times, because they will charge you, stay concealed, and you're going to have to get close into melee range for you to be able to strike them. You keep 11 operatives, but importantly, our bomb squig now goes to a bonus operative, meaning he doesn't count for kill ops, which can be both good and bad, because that means that you can send him in for a kill without really worrying about if he's going to affect your kill ops. We now have more APL shenanigans in the sense that some of our guns now more reliably mess with your opponent's APL, and our boss knob has gotten a little bit better. We've got two different archetypes in Seek and Destroy and Infiltration. And Infiltration now does double duty because our Commando Grot does so much more. And we've still got a good mix of melee, shooting, and good defense with just a scratch and 10 wounds, meaning we can generally take a little bit more of a punch than people expect. We're going to talk about some of the cooler operatives in the team right now. We've got the Commando Boss Knob, who's been upgraded in the addition changeover with a full 3 APL and an Astartes level amount of wounds with 14, which means that he overall got a buff in his overall stats, but he now hits on 3s across the board and 4s for shooting. It's reliable, but considering that most other teams have gotten a little bit less reliable, and a lot of twos to hit from leaders has gone away. He really is not that much worse than he looked before. He still remains a key linchpin of the team. And very, very powerful because he can tangle with most things. And because he passes out an APL, he can let one of your orcs, you know, power up when they're least expected. The Commando Breacher Boy has gotten a reasonably large upgrade in his Breacher Ram. Before, we were replacing his Breacher Ram with only three attacks, with either the Choppa or the Sledgehammer, which both granted him four attacks. Those days are gone. The Breacher Ram now gives the full four attacks. Those four attacks now have Severe, Shock, and Brutal, which means that generally you're going to get in at least five to ten damage, because with four attacks on fours, you're generally going to be able to land one or two hits. And when those hits hit, you will be pairing off a free attack, which means that in melee, he's going to be pretty hard. That's also backed up with the ability for him to break a breach hole through a wall and add accessible within an inch of one inch thick terrain, which means that he can create new avenues for your other operas to follow into, which means that Volcus terrain, much easier for commandos to go through. This means that he is now a really good dynamite chucker. Dynamite means five attacks on fours with a big explosion and inside of Volkish strongholds, if you throw that dynamite, that dynamite is going to hit with lethal five. And on the Daka Daka turns where you have lethal five and Daka Daka, you can get way more attacks with the punishing rule. That'll really allow you to put the hurt on your opponent, making the Commander Breacher Boy much improved. Next up, we have the Commando Comms Boy. In a similar vein to what I've been talking about for the Knob and the Breacher Boy being able to change APL and create new parts of the battlefield, the Commando Comms Boy keeps many of the same rules with his ability to do a free mission action, comms boost, and ally, but his new Shaka Pistol rule, Shaka Pistol has become much better. Shaka Pistol now always lands the stun. So because it has the severe rule, the first time you hit an opponent, it will always have a critical. The critical is one and two damage with the ability to stun an opponent. That means that you're going to knock an APL off an opponent, which means that there are going to be situations where a commando boy lodged inside a Vulcus stronghold or next to an objective can now 
give himself free APL, touch the button for free, and then shoot someone else. And that shot is going to be able to really mess with the APL on an area. Backed up by the 10 wounds and the choppa that your boy is going to probably be equipped with from equipment, it's going to be pretty hard to shift him, and he's going to be able to do a lot of stuff. Don't forget about the sweet play where he can give himself an APL, count as three APL for a move, move over, and then do a free mission action, which can let you steal the initiative on an objective that your opponent isn't ready for. Lastly, we've got the pair of the Bomb Squig and the Grot, a pair that most players know pretty well, especially after we got a buff where the pair could be taken together and count as one selection. Generally, I expect that we're going to be taking the pair of them. The Bomb Squig now offers a great threat to anyone between Daka Daka and Six Dice. So on the turn where you have Punishing, which means that a critical will let you turn a miss into a success, the six attacks on fours of your Dynamite is going to reliably do a lot of work. Interestingly enough, because there's no Rider on the Explosion rule, the Bomb Squig can actually survive sometimes when he blows up his Dynamite by himself. It's a funny little rule, but we don't really expect that to do too much, especially with the still decreased range of the Explosion of only one inch. However, the changeover to three objectives and new mission actions on Tac Ops means that the Grot is the perfect piece to threaten our opponents. Now, if you're doing surveillance, you just have to pick a valid target. You can send the Grot all the way to the other side of the board, have him stare down your opponents as he valid targets them, and then he just has to sit on conceal in the backline objective next to no objective markers that your opponent now has to pay attention to for the rest of the game. Eventually, if your opponent takes the eye off the prize, the Grot can then swing over to an end game objective and steal something your opponent's not ready for, or he just scores the full six points from surveillance and forces your opponent to be very frustrated, making an easy six or nine points depending on if you use the primary op for that grot. Of course, we've got the same set of strategic ploys, all of them very powerful. We've got something for everything with movement, so shh is really powerful now because at the beginning of turn two, if we've Given our opponent a little bit of room, we can now back off or push forward, depending on if we win or lose initiative. We've got the Daka Daka Daka, which is punishing, which is at when you get a critical in shooting, you get to take a miss and turn it into a hit, which is very powerful with the number of operatives we have that have gone up to six dice. We've got WAG, which is just balance and melee, which is a little bit of a downgrade, but still means that of our four attacks or our three attacks hitting on threes, we're going to be able to reliably get all three or all four of those attacks. Meanwhile, Skulk About makes its return, meaning that if you get shot and you're on a conceal order, which we're almost always going to be because of Throat Slitters, we're going to be able to take some extra defensive saves and make those 10 wounds really count. As far as uh, Firefight Ploys, we'll have less flexibility than our strategic ploys, but we do have lots of fun little tools. Just a Scratch Returns, like letting us dodge any one normal defense or one normal attack dice during any given turn. This is definitely one of the more powerful plays. It means that any orc in most shooting or fighting steps will play as 14 or 15 wounds, which can really put the cramp on someone's style. For someone frustrated against commandos, you can always try to snag a little bit of extra damage by fishing for criticals. We've got the out-of-phase melee returning with Crumpum. Definitely very powerful because you can start a fight when your opponent is not ready for it and then free up an objective when your opponent is not expecting it. We've got Cunning but Brutal, which allows us to take a normal and turn it into a critical on the turn where we make a charge from Conceal, which we're doing with Throat Slitters. And then we've got Movement and APL buffing in the form of Shake It Off, where we ignore Injury and APL modifiers for one activation. Our ploys, they remain just as good as they've ever been. And I expect that most players are still going to be budgeting one CP a turn for just a scratch. With, you know, sometimes crump them if you don't use just a scratch because your opponent is worried about you. We've got four special equipment. The harpoon and dynamite both seem to have some interesting play, with the dynamite obviously being a once a game thre threatening blast attack, which does quite a bit of threat. It's got the five attacks on fours, four, five, blast one, heavy and saturate rules with range four. The big boost here is that unlike the old edition, every single operative now carries the dynamite, which means that on Volkus Strongholds and on Gallodark, if you throw the dynamite, since anyone can threaten that, now you 
carrying around a five attacks on fours, five, six, four, uh, five attacks on fours, four, five, lethal five attack on a Daka Daka turn, which means that the dynamite can do a lot of work on any of these settings. Similarly enough, we've got the new and improved Harpoon, which also does an attack from any operative, but it comes with lethal five and stun. Which means that once a turn, you will just bust out four attacks on fours, four five, lethal five stun on a Daka Daka turn. You're probably going to get the extra crit. Maybe not necessarily, but four attacks on fours is a pretty good chance. You hit them, you stun them, messing around with APL, and then you also get extra dice from Daka Daka. So all of these things are excellent. Overall thoughts? Commandos are definitely looking pretty strong still. They've got a good mix of all of the different ploys that you'd want. They've got the same tough operatives. The only downside to picking up commandos this late in the game is that just know in a year they'll be declassified. Whether or not whether or not Games Workshop sticks to the rule of <laughs> get <laughs> whether or not Games Workshop sticks to the rule of commandos getting updates for the rest of the edition, we'll have to wait and see. But if you're looking for a team that's really powerful and really flavorful, the Commandos still seem like an excellent choice. And if that was fun, thanks for coming, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and come by Just Another Kill Team Podcast for more great Kill Team content.